Hi again, everybody. My name is Melissa Palmer. I'm a senior technologist here at Veeam Software, and I'm also a VMware certified design expert. What I want to show you now is our disaster recovery orchestration solution. It's called Veeam Availability Orchestrator, and we're going to do the same thing we kind of did with Veeam 1, go now to next. So I'll start with version three of the product, which is generally available right now, and then I'll show you version four as well. So let's face it, <laughs> we're talking about this right now because disasters happen. Uh, if your servers are on fire or the zombies ate your data center or you've got malware, hardware failure, or any number of things, this is not in fact fine. We've all learned this probably the hard way and that's why disaster recovery automation and orchestration is so important. When we start talking about Veeam Availability Orchestrator version four, the key feature to this product, uh, to this version of the product is introduction of orchestration for Veeam CDP replicas. Now, Kirsten should have tweeted a video with the TFD22 hashtag, and that's Anthony Spiteri from our team, go, kind of giving the whole uh, CDP pitch that he's done for previous Tech Field Day events. When I talk about orchestrator and what it's capable of, I like to kind of put things in three categories once again. So reliable recovery, being able to prove reliable, scalable orchestration at an application level, knowing that you're always going to be able to recover reliably in the event of disaster. In many cases, automated testing, right? I'm sure we've all been locked in a data center for a weekend doing a DR test that maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. It worked enough for our audit point to say we did it. Uh, this is testing that's completely automated, non-disruptive to your production environment, scheduled and on demand, however you want to run it. And uh, we also have a lighter weight check, a uh, readiness check that kind of just proves that your recovery resources are always ready for failover, as well as uh, checks your RPO on a regular basis. Now, dynamic documentation, Kirsten and I love to talk about documentation. It's one of those things that a lot of us IT people aren't necessarily into, but the fact is when it comes to disaster recovery and business continuity, it is very important. So we're getting full audit trails of our disaster recovery plans, right? Each disaster recovery plan will say each and every VM in the plan, each step taken on the VM. And more importantly, if you scroll to the end of it, you'll see who's changed what when, uh, that built-in change packing and uh, compliance reporting. And when you run one of the uh, disaster recovery tests or a readiness check, proactive remediation. Orchestrator is really great about telling you exactly what's wrong in your environment so you can fix it. Now I want to hop to some demo and we're going to be doing something similar that we did before. So I'm going to start, show you how to run a DR test uh, now. And then I'm going to go into the next version, how to create a DR plan and how to actually run a DR plan. Now, now is going to be live. Next, I have a recorded video, but I have my version four lab up and running if we need to dive into anything deeper. So let's start with version three. I got to hop back over to my lab here. And this is basically the orchestrator interface, really simple, really to use HTML5 based, use it anywhere from any dev device. Uh, and I wanna show you how to run a disaster recovery test. So I'm gonna come here to my disaster recovery plan. We call them orchestration plans. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say run verify. Uh, I'm gonna say verify and run a data lab test. Now, all I need to do is pick the data lab I wanna use. The data lab is something we configure in backup and replication ahead of time. So I'm going to pick this one on the server. Here's a really powerful option. So we have a couple things we can do. We can just run our data lab test and let it do its thing. It'll send us a night report when it's done saying, hey, your test was successful. You clearly met your RPO and RTO, have a great day. Or we can actually test and keep our lab powered on for a specific amount of time. Now, this is great for application owners, right? If they want to test those patches, that application upgrade, if they want to test changes, or there's a new person on the team that they just don't want to hand over the keys to the kingdom for quite yet, you can actually leave the application running and let them go break it, right? It's a copy of the production environment. We're just going to throw it away later so they can do anything they want in here, completely non-disruptive. And this kind of ties into the data reuse act, uh, piece of Act2 that we were talking about, right? Really easy for even app owners to access. We're just going to choose a lab group. Now, all a lab group is, is any supporting VMs that your application needs. So anything that's shared, AD, DNS, stuff like that, that would be in your lab group. You click summary, click finish. And that's it. Orchestrator is going to first start up the data lab. 
And uh, then it's actually going to go and run our disaster recovery test against our VMs. It couldn't be easier. I just ran a disaster recovery test. Now, I have one that I started ahead of time that's running. And another great feature of Orchestrator is the ability to see everything from this UI and what's going on in your environment. So we can see that I started my data lab appliance for my test. And then we can actually click into our disaster recovery plan, our orchestration plan, take a look at what's going on. I see this VM right here. This was the VM in my plan. And we can see all of the things that Orchestrator did to our VM. One cool thing I want to point out, and you'll see this in the next demo as well, is this custom script I ran. It was a script I uploaded to Orchestrator. All that script does is uh, prints out the name of the VM. So it's super simple. And uh, you can actually write data from these scripts right to the Orchestrator UI, where you'll see right here. But it's also captured in all the reports. So use case, a lot of customers have these DR scripts they have to run for validation and verification. Like I used to work in a very highly regulated environment. And even after we moved or recovered something, we would have to run all these scripts, pop them into Orchestrator, and let Orchestrator do it for you. Now we're going to switch back to my deck real quick. And I'm going to uh, show you some of the features in version four, which brings CDP replicas into Orchestrator. And now we're going to show how easy it is to create a DR orchestration plan. Site scopes are role-based access. I'm just going to do this as an administrator. But you can get really granular to give application owners specific access to only their applications and what they should have access to, right? Uh, call it TFD. We're going to pick a CDP replica plan, but you can see all these steps on the side right here. They're very similar for each and every plan. A couple things will change based on your plan type. If I pick a restore plan, I'll see the option to actually protect the VM groups so I can have a backup and replication job kick in after I've recovered to protect that data that's now running production in DR. And we'll also have the ability to pick a recovery location for a backup. That's just where we're recovering it to. But let's proceed with a CDP replica plan. I just need to pick the VMs I want to protect. Uh, these are powered by vSphere tags. I add them to my plan. And then I can actually see all of the VMs in my group here. Pay attention to those names because we're going to see those in vCenter a little later. The next thing that we're going to do here is VM recovery options. So this is really powerful. We have the ability to do things either simultaneously or in sequence really handy. We can get really granular and say, I need this to come up in this order. And here's the magic, right? Here are all the orchestration plan steps out of the box. We have all these enterprise application verification steps that you can add to your plan. Or if you see this little um, like code icon, it's exactly what I had before. It's a custom script I've updated to uploaded to Orchestrator to let it do basically whatever I want it to. Now, any plan steps I add right here in this screen, they're going to apply to every VM in the plan. After I've created the plan, I can actually go in and edit things and get really granular at the per VM level. So say, OK, uh, I have a database server, or maybe I have a domain controller. Let me add that domain controller port verification step to that domain controller only. RTO and RPO, the most important thing when it comes to DR, we have the ability to set it in each plan and then track it granularly through the data lab test as well as the readiness checks. So since this is CDP, I'm going to set an RTO of one minute and an RPO of 30 seconds. The next thing that we talked about is that reporting step that people you know, sometimes don't love. But the truth is we have fully customable, customizable report templates available in a lot of languages localized. So you just kind of pick the template you want to use. You can do them per application basis. You just edit them in Word to add any relevant data. And that will be used by all of our reports, like the plan definition. That is your disaster recovery plan report with a full audit log. We're going to have that run automatically every day and send you any updates. And that readiness check, again, that's a lightweight check. It's going to check your recovery resources, make sure they're ready for a failover at any given moment. And we're going to run that when we create our plan. It's actually really, really quick. We're going to see that right now. Uh, here's a summary of my plan. Click Finish. And then Orchestrator is automatically going to run that initial readiness check. So we can see how we're doing, right? If everything's good, we're ready to either test it or fail it over. But if it came back with a yellow icon, that report would tell us exactly what we need to go in and fix and change to make it successful. Now we're going to enable this plan real quick. And that's going to give us the uh, one kind of one click ability to launch our plan. Now, the, my favorite button in all of Orchestrator is probably the launch button, just because 
I don't know, I love space and launches. We were talking about that a little bit this morning. So I'm gonna hit the launch button. I'm gonna click run. All I need to do is put in my password. I need to pick my restore points that I wanna use. So a couple different options for CDP. And I can actually browse my restore points, either use the latest or go back in time. It just lets me know my latest readiness track in case anything's wrong. It's gonna warn me that I might have stuff wrong here. And I click finish. And we just need to give Orchestrator a little bit of time to start its failover. Um, Orchestrator is just so good at letting you know what's going on while you're doing it in real time. Uh, this is great for those op te app teams. It's great for the ops teams. It's great for everybody, really. So if we go and click on our plan and click on uh, our VM name, we can see everything that Orchestrator is doing. So right now it's kind of running that process replica VM step. And here is everything that Orchestrator is doing for us, you know, full audit log, you know, everything that's going on in your environment. I think if we go into vCenter, we can see that CDP Lino 1 and Lino 2, those are the ones we recognize from earlier and we can see the replicas are powered on. So the replicas get powered on and then that testing step is gonna start. So if we go back to Orchestrator, we can see that things have gone a little further uh, we're at the check VM heartbeat step. Yeah, we finished processing a replica VM. It's checking the VM heartbeat to make sure it's online. And once it's confirmed that it's online, it's actually gonna go and start running any of those steps that it has in its plan. A Little bit more time for it to just kind of finish what it's doing. It tells you exactly when it's done, a nice big beam green check mark, meaning you're failed over, everything looks great. We can go back in here. We can take a look at our application verification script. And once again, we can see the PowerShell script and kind of what I have put in there. So it's just some you know, generic application verification that I have to run because I'm in a regulated environment. And that is pretty much Orchestrator in a nutshell. One thing I wanna to reiterate to the attendees and the viewers is that you know, we haven't abandoned our on-premises bit. So that cloud data management includes the private cloud. So what you've shown Melissa really you know, shows iteration and Max a good a bit on the tweet there about testing, reliability, verification of backups and bit. But uh, speaking of testing, yeah. before we take a couple questions, uh, I have a hashtag on Twitter because we love our hashtags here at Veeam. It's called DR Test Tuesday. And I've really been fo putting a focus on DR testing with Orchestrator lately. So if you go to DR Test Tuesday on Twitter, you can see all of my videos for testing. But if you follow any of the links to my YouTube, I also have configuration videos. There's literally a video of me configuring all the settings in Orchestrator in 20 minutes. So once you install Orchestrator, you've gone from nothing to do the basic configuration in 20 minutes. You saw me create a plan, it took less than five minutes, and then you're ready to start testing DR. Or if you're not quite ready to test because that readiness check came back with things you need to fix, right? You're ready to at least start fixing the issues that you might already have in your disaster recovery environment. The thing that intrigued me most was the data lab. Uh huh. One of the things I always struggled with was building a proper testing environment in a bubble mm -hmm. that I could, you know, spin up and check without interrupting any of the production stuff. Like, yeah. I don't want to spin up a, a domain controller that's accidentally outside of the bubble and collides with my actual domain controller. So, like, what are the requirements for this data lab? So there's really not many. It's actually configured through Veeam backup and replication, right? So Orchestrator integrates with backup and replication to understand all your existing backup jobs, replica CD, jobs, CDP jobs. So after you have it all configured in backup and replication, you pop in orchestrator and it recognizes everything. So you don't need to go reconfigure anything or make new jobs to protect anything, right? We integrate. So there's actually that data labs piece, you go in there and you create this isolated proxy appliance. And there's a lot of different issue, um, a lot of different options for networking and how you set it up. And then it leverages that under the bubble. So that's definitely a deeper discussion that I'd love to have with you. And I know we have a lot of good videos online, but we actually built into Veeam Backup and Replication have the ability to deploy that proxy appliance that's gonna take care of all that isolation for you.